Hi guys. I um, come back to you with an update, but this update is uh, not even um, supposed to to be because you never saw the first content. So I will start with the beginning. Uh, a few days ago, I needed to take out some device, and like with most of uh, our devices, my device has an. Uh, power brick, you know, outside, Walmart, wherever you call it, a power adapter, a external mains to lower voltage power supply, uh, encased in a case, and you plug it in and you get it working, and um, surprise, surprise, uh, my device was uh, acting strangely. The device is an audio amplifier that is working, you know, lower voltages. It's not a really high power, but it's still an audio amplifier, a few watts there. And uh, the, was acting like it, a lot, like a motorbike. And I remember that nothing was wrong with the amplifier. It was like boom, 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 boom. Wanted to power on, but then powering off, and then powered on, and then powering off, and then again. In a forever loop so I made the video about the Woolworth repair or power brick repair power supply repair it was a fi quick fix uh, until I have the, the proper components to put there but uh, unfortunately I forgot to unpause the recording and yeah I made the repair <laughs> and uh, stuff uh, without any any footage so now i'm back to finish the the job not the quick repair to make it um, the final repair and put the capacitors uh, the okay so back to the to the beginning i will take the power adapter and show it to you it is about this kind of power adapter guys it's the kind that all you have around home a lot of them yeah so what's wrong with this? Uh, I put it uh, away in a working condition and after some time I took it trying to use it and it was motorbiking. So I was, I was thinking that maybe the audio amplifier it uh, has some, uh, some problems. It, usual for class A or class AB amplifier to motorbike but not for class D which was this case. So the class D amplifier can motorbike if the filtering is bad, but the frequency at, they, at which they are working is higher. So I don't think it's a motorbike. But in any case, this was not quite a motorboating or motorbiking or whatever you want to call it. That sound of motor of um, chopper <laughs> trying to to uh, 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 running. No. No, it was different. And I knew the culprit. The culprit was the power supply. It wanted to start and then shut down fast and repeatedly. So I know the electronics inside it was working and only the um, short that happens in a capacitor uh, it's, or somewhere on the, on the, uh, on the way was um, causing it to to, to act like that so I tried to repair it the brick itself was um, ultrasonically weld so welded like that so no one can open it and uh, keep uh, keep the moisture outside away from uh, from the electronics the Woolworth is well made and uh, I had to hacksaw my way in it, so it will not look pretty after I finish with it. But uh, I will try to make it look pretty. But until then, I need to still we still need to work a little bit on uh, on it. So for this reason, I'm making the second video trying to install the the, the left components. I need to put another capacitor there inside. And then, and only then, and after that, 
we should uh, we should close the the device okay now it looks quite interesting because uh, i keep it sealed with uh, you know isolation tape but this will not be able to to be closed again i had to hack so inside it okay so it will always be bad it will always be bad like that or something like that so for the reason i will uh, try to find a new home for it but until then i will still use this uh, this casing so i will take the tape off uncover it and then we'll try to solder the new components in or the the new component i will say but uh, before that let's yeah so i put one capacitor it should supposed to have two i'm sorry for the lost footage and uh, what can i say i'm sorry but uh, that happens to everyone even to big guys and bigger guys uh, and uh, it's human to to forget stuff and uh, i didn't forgot to play to to, to press the pause but uh, i it looks like i didn't release it the the pause where it was i don't know releasing and put it back again I, okay so i will take it uh, take it apart and i will not power it on i will take it apart as uh, a celebrity will say so for this reason i will switch the camera to the to the working to the workbench somewhere around here i don't know i'm sorry if the camera is shaky it's not free-handed but um, i don't know i have to find a, a proper position for the for the camera to to be able to for me to to have it and let you see what i'm doing in the same time and um, not to not to block your vision in the same time again same time and same time yeah ticks verbal 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 ticks and uh, stuff so we have a screw there we will use the top for uh, for that and now we will take it uh, apart uh, it looks like this the culprit was uh, this capacitor was uh, bulged and uh, oh just a second guys i uh, need to to take out the green uh, filter okay i need to take out the green filter because uh, yeah uh, it will not show the PCB, it will show the transparency, <laughs> it will see it as a green and yeah. Um, so I don't know how to keep this in order for you to see it. Let's see, it's a strange position of the camera. So this capacitor here, yeah, was, um, was blown, you know, bulged. And the other one, the smaller one that has the place here, was not bulged. The top was flat. And for a fast inspection, you will say that uh, that's, that capacitor is okay. But it was uh, not okay because the, 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 the downside of it uh, was, um, was bulged. So, yeah. I don't know, I had a strange uh, reaction a few, some time ago. I, uh, where was it? Uh, I lost power on one of the extension cords that I'm running in the room. And uh, with no reason, all I did uh, was to take it out of the wall and plug it back. So I think I should... Uh, should verify after the this recording 
the power cable and see if was the extension cord or the wall wart, the, the, the socket, the main socket. I don't know. Okay, we will see that. So, back to to our ships. I don't know, I have that logo, I need to buy a proper camera, I'm not using the phones and stuff like that, but what can I say, I'm at the beginning, and you know, the beginning, everything, it's difficult, I'm not complaining, I'm just letting you know that the reason that logo is there, so I have um, two capacitors that I eat tested and I know they work let's see which is proper for size really thing because the capacitance it's higher and the voltage is higher so I will go with this which is uh, some microfarads I don't know let's see I don't have the I should go and buy some glasses because uh, yeah this or this i don't know the, this is should be better Hundred. i don't know which brand is better suncomp i think looks like better quality and it's in the same um, color shape and yeah i should uh, straighten the pins and try and fix it okay all we need to do is to fix the to put the capacitor in its place in the proper position I don't know, with the short legs it's a little bit more difficult than with normal uh, longer legs of the new uncut capacitor, but I have no uncut capacitor, I had to use one that I used a little earlier, so yeah. It's fitting inside, it should. It should fit. It should fit on both sides. Uh, it's a little bit too big for the size, but it will, uh, it will fit. It will fit inside because uh, it will not stay here for, for longer. Time. I don't know, I can still think I can uh, try the other one. I will try the, uh, the other one, the smaller one. Our size is not as capacity, as capacity there. Not, uh, big difference between them hmm. is the one that has different uh, hole sizes for different uh, footprints so that's a good uh, thing yeah i will bend a little the um, so we have it in place the polarity is the correct one as is marked so um, we should now attempt to to solder it yeah. i don't know if you will be able to see stay there i try to keep my hands out of uh, of the of the cam of the cam view so thin a little bit the um, the tip and then soldier uh, solder the 
Uh, it should be enough. That should be enough. And that's it. Fixed. Now with the aesthetics, it's a, another story. It will take a long way until this will be a, beautiful again. I hope it will be again beautiful. I don't know. Because uh, the way it's made. The way it's made. That's one of the good examples, you know, of the produced of the devices and goods that are made with the good with the good interest of not letting the owner or the customer to fix it and repair it after when it's needed you know it's made with this in mind because there is no other way where you should sonically weld an electronic device that has inside, you know, capacitors, electrolytic capacitors. And um, expect that this device to have a long life and be serviceable. If it's welded in that, uh, in that manner, that means that the device will... Um, when the capacitors will fail, and they will fail, believe me, they will fail for sure. When the capacitors will fail, the whole device will fail. So it's impossible to have it properly closed because the hexo cut, you know, the blade length into the material. So... Um, I can put it together like this. I can try to, you know, do something, but uh, I need to compensate for the lost material um, all, all the way around because I had to hex all around it. I tried with the cutter, you know, scraping away the the material, uh, but was not um, it was not enough. Uh, don't play at home with the cutter if you are not um, used at a, 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 a <laughs> a, a professional <laughs> no I am <laughs> yeah that's um, that's a proper way of um, using a knife like this it's a utility knife it's a cutter so we try to clean the margins for welding but uh, I have nothing Nothing more to do. I need a little bit longer blade for this reason. Anyway, I'll change the blade for after this. You cannot use this blade to cut something else after I cut plastic with it. So, that's the, the rounding. And we will take some tape. Electrical installation tape and fix it until we find the proper way to isolate to 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 close the 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 case. The casing is uh, bad because it was welded sonically welded, and that's bad. I don't know, I should stay and work here somewhere, yeah. So that's the the bad part, you know. The design of the PCB, I didn't pay attention to, too much attention on, uh, on this uh, on this time, because it was a quick fix, it was, it should be, uh, you know, fixing it uh, properly, not, but quick and short. So I don't get to uh, get you bored uh, you know, watching me repairing stuff. But uh, that's the thematic of this channel. I will repair and try to repair as fast as I can. Because, you know, 
it's difficult to to repair stuff um, other than the way you can so we have it done i think i should put another part here we have it done we will um, we will test it with the amplifier that is working with it should work with i will not cover the the specs unfortunately i have to put it down there but i need to let the the specs to be visible i don't need the the listings there like you know the certifications but i need to see the the specs because sometimes you forget what's about it after many years and if you are like me and build a lot of stuff and make a lot of stuff and f sometimes you i forget to put um, labels proper labels everywhere which voltage should work i because at that moment i know and then after one year of uh, shelving i'm sorry for that i forgot that the microphone stand is on the table and yeah it's making a lot of noise and i saw the peak there uh, not nice yeah again again yeah so with that said we have it uh, fixed for the moment we have it fixed okay I should power off the, the soldering station because it's not needed anymore at this moment for this repair we will use it again later but uh, because of a flow in the design of the of, of this um, power supply uh, I cannot leave it long oh if I don't use it because the transformer it's still um, drawing power and uh, i don't know it's under dimensioned or badly w wounded and badly made and uh, stuff and it's getting hot uh, even i don't know in a short time uh, this moment i think uh, we'll uh, switch the camera from the bench you know that's uh, and wanted to say about uh, the repairing uh, of the stuff a few words because the most important uh, stuff of working with electronics it's nice to make new products and uh, develop new ways and new things and have fun but the most part the most fun part of electronics and i learned electronics because of this so i will um, i will switch the camera i'm sorry again i will pointing it to to me so uh, i'm not a cyborg no it's my lens that i look at the small objects yeah so um yeah you know that's the reason um everyone should uh, be able to fix some little stuff the Razeku store you know yeah okay so regarding the possibility to repair why is everything made to last less than it's supposed to because we pay for it we pay for every product with money and for money we sell our time so we pay with time and seconds from our life for the products we own and buy Ah, we almost own I can say yeah we almost own so the the reason that uh, I'm speaking about this is because guys we should not allow anyone to take away our right to own you know it's one of, of the fundamental uh, uh, rights of a human to own wherever he owns yeah i'm sorry english is not my uh, first language 
uh, uh, I will uh, speak in Romanian too. I am a Romanian guy. If you don't know me, okay. I'm a Romanian guy. I live in Romania, Bucharest. I was born in Moldavia, Galatia. I'm used to blades and uh, firearms and stuff like that. But I'm a peaceful guy. I like to play music on the guitar, piano, wherever. I'm not a professional. I just, you know, like to fool around with uh, music and friends. And uh, what can I like? Uh, I like, what can I say more? I like uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, in this, a lot of stuff is electronics, woodworking, metalworking. But I'm living on an apartment, so uh, my possibilities to show you what I do uh, and I like to do and what I would like to do are limited because of the nature of the places where I live, of the place where I live is that, um, you know, I cannot make a lot of noise because I'm living on the block and the apartment near me and on top and under will have to suffer if I make noise, too much noise, yeah. So the reason for me not publishing a lot of stuff is that I was hoping that I would be able to move to a rented uh, lab where I will have a mechanical workbench, you know, um, a woodworking workbench and some you know i don't need a really a huge amount of stuff but you cannot do electronics and woodworking and leather carving and leather working on the same uh, table uh, because uh, some projects in case in case of the electronics is, are taking a lot of time so back to repairing back to repairing is because see products like that small we talk about this because we started the day with this. This is a power adapter. It's a power supply. It's the type of the power supply that it's a power supply that is using commutation. You know, it's a different power supply than the linear power supply. There are two big, big. Uh, there are two big uh, branches of power supplies linear and commuted power supply yeah so um, yeah they are smaller because of this uh, second branch they made they are part of they are smaller they have advantages and disadvantages on the disadvantages sides is the fact that they are noisy and if you don't believe me that they are noisy, just do this small experiment. Take a radio that has a portable, a battery operated radio that has some um, uh, short wave or medium or long wave uh, frequency receiving bands. Uh, find the place where it's quiet you know, somewhere, and then go around the um, world words like this, and you will see what I'm meaning about noises. Some of them, you can hear them from many, many, many meters away. They are so noisy. They are like radio transmitters transmitting uh, some kind of noise. Um, I will make a video about uh, this radio noise generated in our house. It's, I don't know if it's toxic for us, but it's toxic for some part of the electronic devices that we have in home. So repairing this kind of stuff for some people will be like uh, not an option. Not an option because it's so cheap to buy a new one. And in the same time, it's so expensive. And you will understand why it's expensive because uh, it's expensive because of um, what can I how can I say it because of the materials that are going into it because of the 
power consumption that are going to producing this and human hours and pollution and this will not be properly disposed most of the times so it will end up in a garbage shoot or uh, in a garbage collection uh, area where it will be rusting and uh, decaying and spilling out all the nasty chemicals inside of it and it's plastics and yeah it will take a while to decompose don't worry it will decompose i'm not on that side where you know the earth uh, and no 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 it's just expensive the earth has uh, meanings to deal with the pollution that we made and there is a guy that uh, some most of you i think some of you will know it's a comedian that lived uh, not long ago and he said that uh, maybe earth made us for plastic i don't know we don't know but for sure it's not that the earth will not be able to deal with the plastic and the garbage that we do it's expensive for us and that's the way where uh, we should think about making products that are reliable and long lasting and not change the stuff that it's working, you know, and make it repairable. Designers, guys, make it repairable. Why you should design a product that has a short life? Because you want your consumer consumer to, to buy another one, yeah, that's it. You want to sell a lot of Woolworths, you will not sell. If the people will wake up and they will know what they need, then they will not buy your product if it's made like this. If you see a Woolworth that it's welded, don't buy it, guys. Don't buy it. Don't buy products that are made against you. Don't buy products that don't let you open them. Don't buy products that they don't have a proper serviceable uh, instruction set. They don't offer uh, anything. No support, no parts, no, just buy another. You know, if they offer service by replacing the biggest components like boards, then maybe, maybe it's time for us to think about our budgets, our times and our lives, how much money we will spend not being necessary to um, rebuy or buy again or rebuy uh, a Walmart uh, every few months because they are dying in this rate, you know? It's like that. A new phone every one year or two. Uh, why? Because they obsolete it by software. I have an iPhone 4 that is still working, but it's obsolete. I cannot install anything that I don't already have in my cloud, in iCloud, wherever. It's not my, it's their cloud. I have an Android tablet that I bought at that time when it was launched, some time ago. It's working. I still hope it's working. Uh, yeah, and if the battery is not uh, a big pillow inside of it, you know, but that's a different story. But at least I, I think I can change the battery for that uh, tablet. Uh, anyway, guys, don't buy products that are not are taking away your freedom to own your own stuff. You paid for it. You should own it. You should be able to use it forever if you leave it for your nephews, for your kids, and so on. A product don't have to die after one month or two or one year or two. It could be that you need a new stuff that's because of the evolution and you want to stay in time with the evolution, but the manufacturer do not have to force you and me in any way to buy new stuff like this this is intentionally built to not be serviceable and it's built to be thrown away 
you know how much the these two capacitors cost if you buy them one buck one dollar one euro maybe a few lay if you are living in Romania you know three four lay runs wherever yeah one euro is the same one dollar on ballpark is there so for one buck euro dollar wherever you call it yeah EU, euro dollar yeah it's a dollar and euro in the same word yeah it's like in cyberpunk yeah so if you do not prefer to have a serviceable device that you can fix with one buck and use it another two three five years because what i did now i make it to last longer than it was designed to because they choose capacitors that have a short span life lifespan uh, a really short lifespan and they are li really cheap and really really cheap and when i said that you pay one buck for two small capacitors to uh, electrolytics to put there yeah that you can pay a little bit more if you want a little bit maybe two bucks and you will have a really long lasting uh, this device and you forget about it it will need to be re repaired at one time because the electrolytics have one big drawback they live uh, for a short amount of time but not so short that we try they try to convince us not so short they live for many years many many hours of uh, usage continuous usage so yeah about this repair and our right to to own stuff we should not buy products that are against us and you will say but i need that phone yeah you need it maybe but think about it. next year after you paid few hundreds to one thousand euro for a phone or a dollars were uh, even more in uh, in my currency in romanian currency you pay a lot and you go to take a loan for a phone that is not even yours do you have the super administrative privileges of that on that phone can you do whatever you like with it can you take it apart see what's inside put it back maybe you are skilled to do that I understand that the new devices are made you know small and we want them smaller so there are needs some compromises for something like uh, i will not use a screw because it's huge and expensive because it's made of metal and i will uh, charge you the same amount of money like i will use golden screws and platinum screws and jewels inside but uh, i will use uh, glue and uh, you know glue it together so nobody will take it apart because it's glued so you will need the special tools but people are looking there and yeah if they don't offer any i i, I have nothing against any brand no i'm not fighting a brand i'm trying to raise your conscience to the way that we should think we should not accept stuff that we pay and is not owned by us when you have a house or car a home a knife a screwdriver let's say when you buy a screwdriver it's yours or no can you leave it to the next generation yes can you do whatever you like to do with it can you throw it in the fire yes can you wherever yeah it's yours you don't need approval to give the screwdriver to your neighbor you do not need approval from anyone and the screwdriver should not track you okay
If you buy any tool that it's power tool, then it has some kind of electronics inside. So the electronics inside of that tool, again, will act against you. If, for example, you buy a tractor to do, you know, working on the fields, agricultural fields, you know, and you don't want your tractor to be broken after one or 24 months. You need it to work and be productive because it was expensive and you need to be able to repair it on the field. Most of the cases, if something is go horribly wrong, yeah, you, then you should go and fix it on a specialized uh, place. But most of the cases, a tractor and the tool sets need to be fixable on the place and need to be made, engineered again for long lasting and not for uh, short living. I think uh, this, uh, guys, this uh, stuff is what's going on. The corporations are hungry for the money and all started with, um, with a, a convention, uh, a stuff that happened in the past and uh, uh, made the companies to realize that they can have a lot of uh, money using this uh, this stuff and it's the the bulb uh, electric bulb the electric bulb Phoebus cartel was um, is the the stuff that I talk about, and it uh, it's not new. Don't get me wrong. At that time, people were used to buy long-lasting products. I don't know how years you have, guys, that watching me. That, but I can say that I I was born during the communist time. And at that time, all that devices that we have were made in home. Most of the people had devices made in Romania uh, after by Romanian companies with Romanian components. And uh, all of them were copied after uh, some Western uh, or other sources, but copies not originals and uh, when I s first saw uh, a device that was uh, made outside Romania it was a uh, shock for me that it was a different way of quality I don't know how much someone that didn't had that uh, experience could uh, could understand what I'm talking about we had crap during the communist time a lot of crap you know a lot of crap but it was way better than the crap that they're selling us for a lot of money today yeah that's true a lot better and it was made in Romania and not in China the Chinese stuff was really really interesting to get and hard to get because we are living in a special place like a prison big as a country as more countries yeah we were more prisons in Europe that lived under the communist time yeah, and every prison had his own rules but the idea is that uh, the components and the stuff that they did at that time when you bought a TV, even in the communist time, in the communist era in Romania, when you had a TV, you had the schematic on it. You know, so the technician uh, could uh, service it uh, some time after. You know, aftermarket servicing. And it has there on the schematics the part list, the um, values, the waveforms, if it was the case, you know, for the scope to, you know, adjust it and align it 
uh, if needed and uh, it will letting you know what tools you need to fix it and stuff like that uh, can you tell me that uh, the hp laptops have uh, and this is just just because i cannot you know the the laptops not hp only because i have a deep respect for uh, hp products that were made um, earlier but uh, and maybe today for the lab products and other ways you know other products like tools uh, bench tools and power supplies and meters and analyzers and stuff like that they make a lot of uh, devices not only computers so the computers for hp are just small small business yeah so yeah can you tell me that you have a schematic for your laptop not that you need to understand it it's not meant for you guys the schematic for the laptop is not meant for you if you have the knowledge to understand it, it's okay you can gain it yeah it's true you can gain the knowledge to understand the schematic but it will help a technician an engineer that it will do the repair later when the laptop or your computer will be you know a classic a vintage maybe you know everything became vintage at one point in time for example today people are considering really cool to have a commodore or amiga or apple II. apropos apple II has a schematic shipped with it and nobody gone dark because they sold the schematic and nobody this was there you can understand it you can make it better and you can improve or modify or adapt a stuff a dispositive or device if you have access to its logic of functioning and the schematics if you want to nobody force you to do that if you don't like it don't use it but don't buy stuff that are against you that's what i'm trying to tell you that are you know oppressing your freedom for example if you buy a phone no matter the brand buy my merch and you will support me thank you yeah uh, if you buy a phone what's the life expectancy of a phone that you expect when you buy it one or two years because they will launch the new model because uh, what what makes you change the phone the fact that it's not acting normally because you made some updates and the software is forcing you to buy a new one because uh, it should not be like that i buy a new phone because the old one is broken usually not because i'm forced by the developer to buy a new phone because it's obsolete my phone because i have no apps no updates and i don't need the updates but i need some applications that because it's a smartphone to use it and you know so if you force my phone and put a buggy stuff that will drain my battery the hell out of the phone and make it work slow and bad and make me think that my phone is old and I need to replace it, then you are a bad company and I will not buy the phone from you. I better stay without. For example, I have my tablet. And is obsolete because I cannot install anything on it. I bought it some time ago. I bought a console from Sony, a PS Vita. Guess what? It's obsolete. They retired even the PS network. I cannot buy new software for it. And it was designed for entertainment. There was not much gamings, games around for, for it. There were, but uh, let's say they, they were okay. But they took them away. If I reset to the factory and format the storage, I'm blank. 
with the console like before it has no possibility to connect to the pro to the manufacturer because it was designed to depend on the cloud on the network services that are there and not mine and when they closed the door and decided that they don't want to maintain that website and that network when that application a bunch of applications there keep them up they closed the door so i remained with nothing really nothing just a brick if i reset it it's just a brick with empty stuff they retired they didn't do anything to help the owners that they put the money and gave the money for the device that it's working great the device is working great but not able to use it that's another example xbox uh, all the consoles they obsolete their products and most of the products I, I think of one and you will see that it's obsolete by design we should not accept that we should change this and it depends only by on uh, only by us to you know is dependable on us on our decision not to buy that stuff not to use that stuff because it's not serviceable we need our voice to be heard by the device the device manufacturer and they need to understand that they better live from selling parts than trying to sell and enforce new products by obsolescence first obsolescence this is not the way that the business should be because we will deplete our resources we will deplete our incomes we will have a better life if we will have long lasting products and again regarding the quality because long lasting it's synonym and it's hand in hand it's going they are going together like in pair uh, with the quality and well engineering and well designed let's say that some products are small enough to not be able to be you know open or serviced at home but give us the engineers who are making the repairs and the people who are you know uh, adventurous enough to do a repair by themselves to do it not force me to buy a new phone because uh, a resistor is burnt or a fuse is blown and one piece of silicon that can be replaced it's damaged or a capacitor or a diode or a transistor or wherever it's a small small thing and another part that it's annoying with the products like this are for example devices that are claiming that they are open hardware and they are not they are just using the name to make money and there's nothing wrong with making money but don't say that's open it's not open nothing is open until you give the proper schematics and the components and i'm talking about raspberry pi here raspberry pi it's a nice product every maker thinks about it and love it since the beginning they exist because maker love to tinker with devices but what was in the heads of the engineers who designed that product to think that having no protection on the power side and not putting there a fuse when the kid that bought the raspberry pi and paid the money that he got from selling stuff wherever doing work or from parents who cares it's a kid who paid for that we're a human no matter if he's a kid he paid money for your device that is tinker friendly and he make a shirt and instead of blowing a voltage regulator that it's proprietary and it's not available for sale nobody can fix a broken raspberry pi 3 that has the power ic power management ic broken because you cannot find the chip you need another raspberry pi that has that chip 
good as a donor board for your integrated circuit uh, chip yeah power management integrated circuit yeah so why that why we should do this why why you should use this component that is on the shelf that is some way twisted that it's not be able to s and uh, you for you you don't let the manufacturer of the ic to sell it separately as a spare you know how many raspberry pi 3 are dead and thrown away because of that and that makes you think that you are a success engineer designing that to fail you should think that it's for kids that they don't know they maybe didn't wanted to make that short circuit and imagine the parents of that kid that bought two kid uh, raspberry pi kit paying you know a few hundred dollars with all the stuff around it so my books and cables and thinkering stuff you know and then after a few moments because kids are kids is not designed only for engineers it's designed for kids too i saw it you encourage the kids to use it so you should make it kids friendly because of that and you should make it human friendly and put the protection for your proprietary power management integrated circuit for example in raspberry pi 3 I don't know if Raspberry Pi 4 has the same problem because I didn't look for it. But I'm betting that is the same I see or maybe a different one with the spin. You change some pins, you put some firmware that it's locked and done published. So how can someone fix a Raspberry Pi 3 power management IC without the IC? Well, if I saw that there is a pin to pin one made on the same company, uh, but it's missing an R on the top to work. Maybe it's pre programmed with your firmware that you forgot to share and put available for us to load it in the power management. Maybe you should, maybe you should release it. It's Raspberry Pi 3, but I'm still using a Raspberry Pi B. Plus first generation and it's working great for the purpose that it was bought then but again i'm one of your users guys raspberry pi guys don't piss on my money don't piss on us give us the good products that you are you know waving and showing yourself around with the products need to be engineered to live long. Uh, that's supposed to be a short repairing clip. I think I will make two clips from this. It's one rant, you know, on the, this rant on the right to repair and the frustration of us being forced to buy stuff every day that is not lasting. So, guys, I'm out.